Hi, my name is Jay Eirick, and I support the PC segment for ST Micro. Maybe you've heard there's a virus out there. That virus has brought us a lot of bad, but has also reminded many of us how essential our tools are for productivity, learning, and creation. I'd like to believe it's a wake up call that our tools must become something more. I have the privilege to work for the best sensor company on the planet, and it's not even close. When our engineers tell me about demos, often my first reaction is, I don't believe you. They tell me they have a Pico projector smaller than my business card, and I don't believe them. And then I see it. They tell me they have speakers made from silicon, and I don't believe them, and then I hear them. At CES last year, some saw these two shrink under the frame of eyeglasses. Shave your chest, they said. We've got a sticker that'll transmit your EKG data to a tablet in real time. I did that a few times. And now they're telling me that they can give the PC a sixth sense and feelings. And, well, that's NDA only for now. The truth is, we make just about everything PC makers buy. USB, TPM, power, Bluetooth, NFC, RFID, MCUs, and more. But much of it doesn't fit. If you've got an idea of how to make it, please email me at the address shown on the screen. Also in this role, I have the privilege of working with some brilliant customers. One of my favorites recently asked, how do we use ST Tech to solve for mental health on the PC? I have to say, at first glance, I wanted to answer, I don't believe we can. But the more focus, thought, and creativity I've applied to this problem, the more I believe it is the perfect question that we should be asking. So now, a few weeks later, I'm in a position to get on a virtual stage in front of a whole lot of people and talk about feelings. Where do I start? Some terrified about public speaking might imagine being on a stage without their clothes on. It worked for a TED Talk, but don't worry. When I say that, what I'd like to expose is my PC hardware. Pretty good stuff for the average Joe or average J. I've got a middle of the road commercial notebook for my personal affairs and another one which was provided by ST for my work. I've got four 19 to 23 inch monitors across my shop and home setups. Pretty good stuff for the average Joe, but pretty much all my customers who are inventing what's next for PCs, they see this setup as unacceptably bad. It can be hard for them to imagine the struggle of the average user because they're all using the best hardware. A recent study I saw showed that our time of flight improves sleep to wake performance by an unbelievably large percentage, but the baseline was 1.2 seconds. Who has a PC that wakes in 1.2 seconds? I certainly don't. Well, I spent a lot of time over the last few months alone in rooms with this stuff, and maybe it's time for some better stuff. But I don't want to just fix it for me. I'd really like to fix it for millions of users out here. So now let's talk about mental health. Anthony Moore wrote the following for the Art of Improvement YouTube channel. Most of us are distracted right now. We're distracted while we're at work or working from home. We're also distracted while we're with family and friends. We're distracted at the gym and on our commute. Or even distracted in the shower. The mediocre majority of us will continue to go through life this way, never experiencing the fullness of a life filled with deep focus and purpose. Most people don't prioritize learning and creating. They don't care enough about any efforts to invest in their personal development and growth. Entertainment is just more important to them. Most people have replaced achieving their life dreams and goals with TV, partying, and social media. Their life is characterized by entertainment and distraction, not learning and creating. As a result, they don't have close relationships. They're stuck in jobs that don't inspire them, and their life is on the fast track to disappointment, and they don't know what to do. Benjamin Hardy once said, entertainment and distraction is the enemy of learning and creation. They will keep you in mediocrity. If you don't want to end up living a life of mediocrity, focus on learning and education. It's the fastest way to become extraordinary, wealthy, and successful.
Now, those of you that know me well know that I love being in my workshop, creating personalized art pieces with a CNC machine, laser cutter, or my 3D printer. I could probably do a whole talk on these amazing machines. All of them need a PC for the project design and to deliver the needed CAM files to make them work. I love tools. So now let's take a moment to look at our tools for learning and creation compared to our tools for entertainment and distraction. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but I know how you feel when you look at the left side of this picture, and I know how you feel when you look at the right side. I know which side of this picture gives you an endorphin rush, and I know which side makes you feel tired. Even the clip art database I'm supposed to use to make this presentation look more professional, it looks like this. About a year ago, I flew across the country for a big conference. I'll never forget the moment when a senior executive was asked on stage, how do we make the PC user experience better than the phone? I remember it because she didn't have an answer. That memory still makes my heart sink into my stomach. I kind of wish we had Jack from Unbox Therapy on stage. I feel like he may have had some ideas on how his setup could be more immersive and more engaging than the phone. But what if entertainment and distraction keeps winning? I digress. Let's get back to focused on learning and creation. Ready to dig in? All right, let's go. On the left, you'll see the boot sequence that I perform two to five times per day. Oh, how I'd love to have all those minutes back in my life, especially now that I've experienced the zero friction, secure entry into my entertainment devices. I've spent hours and hours discussing modern standby and the differences between S4 and S0, but what I'd really like is for it all to just go away. With ST technology, this can be done. No power button, no options to learn about, no insecurity about my notebook melting in my backpack. Over the past five years, we've teamed up with PC OEMs towards innovation in the PC space. In the current environment, I think we're all starting to realize that we need disruption, not just incremental innovation. Some might say, tiny changes to this segment are like the picture in this slide. Our teams working together have convinced some that pigs can fly. We put our time of flight sensors into PCs for presence and they are amazing, but it's not enough. Some have sensor goodness in their PCs, but so many don't. The premium models are putting a few more dollars of sensor goodness into the most cutting edge models for customers, but that only gets to a small percentage of us users out here. What if we zoomed out on this chart? If I could assume there are one top entertainment and distraction device to rule them all, you can see that for our entertainment and distraction, the sensor goodness spans across all models. So every student, every teacher, every healthcare worker gets all the sensor goodness. In order to lift up our learning and creation devices, we need sensor goodness across the full portfolio. We need to push this line down aggressively and eliminate the low end. The famous hockey player Wayne Gretzky once said, you need to skate to where the puck is going to be. Now, I know it's not realistic for me to ask most PC makers to add a $40 camera to their devices, but maybe we could skate to where the puck it was several years ago. Maybe if our watch can tell us how to sleep better, our PC could give us some advice on how to be more productive with less fatigue. Maybe using the 202020 rule. So now it's time for Jay's UX made up chart for today. What's the user experience like for learning and creation tools versus the phone? Well, the login steps are a lot more. I manage more than 200 passwords on my PC and only a few on my phone. Pop-ups happen daily on my PC and I can easily make those all go away on my phone. The phone knows if I'm smiling and if I'm paying attention. What is GGC for new UX feature? This is the number of giant global companies I need to work with to get a feature added to the PC. The gauntlet is pretty rough. Just at the PC OEM, there's 
marketing, engineering, architecture, mechanical planning, industrial design, supply chain, innovation pipeline team, R&D, executives, and so on. But that's not all. We may need the chipset vendor and or the OS vendor to make software or change things on top. By the way, there's three chipset vendors and two OS vendors. And last but not least, if we normalized what one PC OEM spends with the greatest sensor company in the world, the phone guy spends 60 to 100 times as much. That's not double, that's multiply by 100. For fun, what if we could flip the script? What if we imagined a world where the productivity, learning, and creation devices had all the sensor goodness? Well, <laughs> my bosses would probably be pretty pleased with my sales, but more importantly, imagine that watching your favorite reality show included 22 login steps, two sets of equipment to buy, and lots of annoying pop-ups. Would you maybe spend less time doing it? What about if I knew in real time which parts of this presentation you were paying attention to and if that pig photo made you smile, I could create an even better presentation. So could our educators. Is $40 too much to spend an ad to the PC? Maybe. I think it was in the writing of Tim Ferriss where I first learned about minimum effective dose. Minimum effective dose, or MED, is the principle of finding the smallest dose it takes to produce an ideal outcome. Anything less than your med won't work, and anything more is a waste of time, resources, and energy. For the PC, it means maybe we don't have to add more processors to do more for our user experience. Let's take a look at an example. This UX feature is called Lap versus Desk. For those not familiar with the feature, the notebook can run its CPU and wireless at full blast on a desk, but throttles it back if it's on your lap to avoid burning you or pumping you full of Wi-Fi signals. The old way of doing this was to take the sensor input and feed it into a non-optimized CPU where an algorithm based on C code was running all the time. This is a slide for one of our new inertial motion units, or IMUs, which has a machine learning core inside the sensor. If we were to use this sensor for lap versus desk and compare it to the old way of doing things, we could see our minimum effective dose in action. In this new way, we only send an interrupt when the desired state change from lap to desk happens. And the results? Well, we shrank our sensor, so the current consumption of the sensor is going to be about the same. The MIPS consumed on the generic processor goes way down. The traffic on the bus is next to nothing. And last but not least, the system power drops from milliamps to microamps around 1,000 times power savings. This engineering list comes from Mahesh, one of our brightest engineering leaders. It's impressive to be sure, but I like the next list even better. My list is the following. The old way depended on the CPU vendor. With the new solution, any CPU can be easily used and you can switch between them. The old way may have included a software licensing agreement. There is none with the new way. The old way needed three giant global companies to agree and maybe sign a three-way NDA. Not with the new way. The engineers have actually found a way to design out the lawyers. Brilliant. And the last one is employees working on artificial intelligence for data collection to improve our products. That wasn't needed in the old way, but this work is really exciting and I think it's going to look great on his or her resume. What else can we do this for? Too many things to list. For security, we could tell you that Bob has a different gait in his walk than Sally. How about presence? This is an old slide showing that we put the logic for wake on approach into our first PC-based time of flight sensor. The walk away lock on the right, you can, run the CP, or you can run it in the CPU because the machine is already running when you walk away. For the wake on approach, the PC should be in a lower power state and the autonomous sensing of a person approaching happens inside the sensor at a very low power. Now, I've spent time to understand which UX features might be better suited to run in the main CPU. Maybe not everything in 1,000 times less power. 
But wait, everything in 1,000 times less power? Did I mention that our latest image sensor also has intelligence inside? There are too many possibilities to list. So if you're working on the next generation of learning and creation tools, please get in touch with me to schedule an in-depth NDA technical discussion with your team. I can be reached at j.irick at st.com. Thank you for your attention.